Have No Fear, the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is here. Biggity Boom, Have No Fear, the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is here. On today's banging I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, Robert De Niro is 81 years young. Robert De Niro is 81 years young. I am breaking down my five favorite, my five favorite Robert De Niro supporting roles of all time. Plus, fake Paul. Fake Paul. Paul and Mike Tyson are fighting and fake Paul goes full unhinged when he gets booed in New York. What did you think was going to happen in New York? Fake Paul, you're not a real fighter. Plus it's day 318 since the hostages have been in captivity. Talking about that. And more on a brand new banging, high flying, hard hitting museum quality I am Rapport Stereo Pocket starting right now. Miles Jordan, AK the Bleach Brothers, AK the Dust Brothers, start this puppy over something real nice. Stiggity, start this puppy over something real loud. But most importantly, start this brand new banging, high flying I am Rapport Stereo Pocket off with something real funky. It's the I am Rapport Stereo Pocket. Liggity, let's go. Boom. Uh, yeah. Have No Fear, the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast is here. Hickety, have no fear. The I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast is in the place to be. My name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Inflamed Ashkenazi, a.k.a. the Disruptive Warrior, a.k.a. the Gringo Man Dingo, a.k.a. the Sultan of Sniff, a.k.a. the Raging Bullshitter. I love that nickname. I don't know who came up with the raging bullshitter. I don't know if it was me, one of the fans. Was it Mr. New York? Was it my wife? But I love it. I love it so much. Especially when it's Bob De Niro's birthday week. Bobby D, 81 years old. Robert De Niro is turning 81 years years old this week we are three weekends away from the start of the nfl season dun 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 i cannot wait dun 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 i am pumped i know everybody else is fantasy football nfl football flag football Anyway, I hope everybody's feeling good hope everybody's feeling safe hope everybody is feeling really sane as we come to the end the end of the summer, a couple of weeks left. It's not the end. There's a few, if there's three weeks left in summer, it ain't the end. That's, oh, it's a long time. I'm looking forward to Jumbo Josh Allen. Got his hair grown out. I think he's got like a actress or pop singer girlfriend. I can't wait for NFL. I can't wait to be performing in Buffalo. And as I said at the beginning of the episode, Robert De Niro, the great Robert De Niro, the great Robert De Niro turned 81 years old the other day, 81 years young. Robert De Niro, of course, we are celebrating our 10-year anniversary. One of the things that put us on the map was the Robert De Niro line of the week, the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast award-winning segment. It's an award-winning segment, the Robert De Niro line of the week. We had the award-winning Raging Bull episode, which was a great episode. If you haven't listened to the award-winning Raging Bull episode, we had, I interviewed Martin Scorsese, the late, great Jake LaMotta, who, of course, Raging Bull was inspired by. It wasn't a literal depiction of his life, but it was inspired by heavily by his book and, of course, his life. We had on Max Kellerman. We had on John Turturro. We had on Nick Turturro. We had Martin Scorsese. What more do I need to tell you? We had Martin Scorsese talking about Raging Bull. We'll put it in the show notes. One of my favorite movies of all time and certainly one of my favorite Robert De Niro performances of all time. Game-changing film across the board, cinematically, editing-wise, the acting Everything about that movie is like the dunk. It's like before Raging Bull and after Raging Bull. Robert De Niro took method acting to a new level. He actually gained the weight. He actually became Jake LaMotta. The fighting middleweight champion version and then the 
overweight, out of shape, beaten down version. What a movie. What an actor. Robert De Niro is a fucking monumental artist. He's beyond an actor. He's like a painter or a sculptor, like an architect. So happy 81st birthday to Robert De Niro. And since it's Robert De Niro's 81st birthday, I'm not going to do uh, uh, my top five Robert De Niro films of all time. I'm, I'm sure I've done that. I'm going to do my top five Robert De Niro supporting parts of all time. I'm going to start with, in no particular order, Mean Streets. Robert De Niro did not star in Mean Streets. He co-starred in Mean Streets. He brought the bada bing. Without Robert De Niro bringing that bada bing, that ah, that to the screen in Mean Streets. Robert De Niro in Mean Streets is so electrifying, so unique. So charismatic, so explosive. Literally, you're like, that's a movie star. Who is that? What is he doing? How is he doing it? And this is at a time when acting still wasn't in the ultra-realistic style that it is now. You could watch Mean Streets over and over and over and watch some of the other actors while they're on camera with Robert De Niro or off camera during a scene with Robert De Niro. And I swear sometimes they're looking at him like, what is this guy doing? What is he doing? Because he's going at a different speed. It would literally be like taking Allen Iverson and putting him in the NBA in 1969. That's what it was like. He was going at a different, a different speed. Robert De Niro in Mean Streets. That's number one of my Robert De Niro supporting roles of all time. Number two, I go with Jackie Brown. Understated. Barely said anything the whole movie. Barely moved the whole movie. Obviously, Jackie, Jackie Brown's such a good movie. Samuel Jackson it's my favorite Samuel Jackson movie. I think that across the board, Jackie Brown is my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie, but that changes, ebbs and flows. But Bobby D, Robert De Niro in Jackie Brown is just funny. He's doing bong rips. He's having sex on camera, which was just so weird to see Robert De Niro like have sex with Bridget Fonda quickly. He's funny. He's scary. He barely speaks, and he's totally captivating. In a great, 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 understated, underrated performance, I will go with my third favorite Robert De Niro supporting role, Silver Linings Playbook, one of the my favorite films. Uh, I love that film. Jennifer Lawrence, Bradley Cooper. It's so heartfelt. It's a weird, quirky, romantic comedy silver linings playbook and robert de niro plays bradley cooper's father and he's so vulnerable and he's so sensitive and so confused and so earnest in that role and i think it's the first time he showed that kind of older man vulnerability in a film, he's done it since, but Robert De Niro in Silver Linings Playbook, I think he won the Oscar or got nominated for that. Love that movie. I watch that movie at least once a year. The cinematography in that film, all the acting across the board is just excellent. I love Silver Linings Playbook. And of course, the kookiness of the Philadelphia Eagle fan base, uh, Silver Linings Playbook. My top four, Robert De Niro, Supporting roles of all time, Deer Hunter. I got to go with the Deer Hunter. He didn't star in that film either. That was definitely an ensemble cast, a lot of shared screen time. I mean, maybe they say he starred in it. I, I, I think that's a across-the-board ensemble cast. It definitely wasn't just Robert De Niro, of course, Meryl Streep, John Savage, the incredible Christopher Walken. What a movie. John Cazale and Robert De Niro is... Again, understated, totally unique, fierce, scary, everything, everything. He's everything in that film. And of course, the scene where they're playing Russian roulette 
he's just brings a tenacity to that scene and a reality to that scene. And it's just so good across the board. Robert De Niro in The Deer Hunter, another film that is not easy to watch. This is not a fun, easy film to watch, but captivating across the board, game changing across the board and uh, so many good actors. And they were so young. Man, Christopher Walken, they were all so young and just unique looking. And Robert De Niro was at full-blown method, all in, just taking everything to the next level. And my fifth, my top five Robert De Niro supporting roles of all time. This is tough. Untouchables, he's sick in. Al Capone. He's so good in that with Kevin Costner, a young Andy Garcia, of course, Sean Connery, Untouchables. I got to go with The Bronx Tale. A, a, a Bronx Tale, uh, Robert De Niro uh, directed it. Chaz Palmer and Terry, uh, Lilo Broncado. Uh, Robert De Niro plays uh, the father of of the, the, the Chaz Palmer and Terry. Play. It was based on a play, a one-man play, A Bronx Tale by... Chaz Palmer Terry and Robert De Niro's again awesome in that uh, old school Italian uh, bus driving father from the Boogie Down Bronx and iconic film with iconic lines, iconic scenes, so many quotable lines and scenes in that film. So I have to go with a Bronx Tale over Untouchables, but but it, there's you could go on and on. So happy 81st birthday to the great, great, inspiring, awe-inspiring Bobby D, 81 years young. What else is happening? Yo, I watched this Lacey Peterson murder doc and chill. Lacey Peterson, of course, that case, if you don't remember, Lacey Peterson uh, was disappeared. I think this was 94, was one of those cases that just took off it was everywhere and this is when the internet wasn't the internet and crime channels and people magazine and it was just like a scandalous case lacey peterson scott peterson uh inevitably scott peterson that sick he was convicted of his wife his pregnant wife and it was just tabloid heaven for the tabloids and crime news and it was all over the place and there's a three-part documentary on Netflix, they never get old. Like this case, I believe there's other documentaries. I know it's been on Dateline. I know it's been documented a lot, but there's something about murder docs, murder docs, murder podcasts, crime, solved crimes, unsolved. I mean, this, this case has been solved. You did it, Scott Peterson, you f And it's 21 years later. I believe it was 1994, 30 years later. And this guy scott peterson still hasn't admitted his young wife lacey peterson who was pregnant and this happened in northern california and she disappeared and people were like sympathizing with him sympathizing with him and then it came out that he had a mistress and then uh you know he confessed to having a mistress but even though he had a mistress he was saying, it doesn't mean I'm a killer, and bop, 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 but you did it, man. And he still hasn't admitted it. And the crazy thing is about these psychopaths, these lunatics, is that you can do something like this. The whole world knows you did it. The evidence is pointing and proving that you did it. They found the body, and you still don't admit it. You're not getting out of jail, you sick f Scott Peterson. You killed your wife. And... His sister and the family are still trying to fight on his behalf. Who did it? Scott Peterson's sister? If Scott Peterson didn't do it, who done did it? Anyway, it's great on Netflix, three-part uh, Lacey Peterson. I think it's called American Murder. And I watched that. And, uh, you know, we watch all these murder docs. Call it Murder Doc and Chill, of course. Here at the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. We had t-shirts that sold. It was the Netflix logo and it said Murder Doc and Chill. Do you want us to put out t-shirts? We had great merchandise. Maybe it was before merchandise was a thing. The Murder Doc and Chill t-shirt was awesome. It was the Netflix logo, but it said Murder Doc and Chill. And we sold a few. And I'm like, 
fantastic butter soft t-shirt, just like I'm wearing, of course, red Netflix. Maybe it was the red. Maybe we should do it in black with red. Something. Who would want a murder doc and chill t-shirt? We'll put them back out. Don't try to steal the idea. We came up with the logo and we came up with the merch. You come up, you try to steal the idea, f***ing sue you. I recommend that if you're into murder docs. Then, you know, my wife was like, why do you love these murder docs? And I was like, I don't know. We're like, I'm playing around with her. She's like, you really seem to be into these, you know, disappearing husbands, disappearing girlfriends, disappearing spouse docs. And I'm like, I know, I just, I don't know. <laughs> of course, my wife and I, uh, we have our Rappaport's Reality Podcast, Rappaport's Reality Podcast, where we discuss all things, well, a lot of things about our relationship, all things reality TV, and all things popular culture, and it drops every single Wednesday like clockwork, and of course, this is a big week, big, big week for Rappaport's Reality, the Rappaport's Reality Podcast, because the reunion of a fantastic star-making season of Love Island will be discussed all the way down to the bone. We're breaking it down to the bone on Rappaport's reality. I can't wait to break that down. Oh my goodness. If you want a reality show, I think it's uh, season six or five. We don't fact check at the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, but if you want a fun reality TV show that had my wife in tears. It had me tear adjacent. I wasn't crying watching Love Island, the finale, but I was almost crying watching the finale of Love Island. My wife was crying. I was crying adjacent. That's how good it is. And they're like, what are you talking about, Mike Rapp? It's fake. It's set up. You watch it. I'm a sucker for romance. Love Island, the finale this season was awesome. Great cast. Shout out to Cordell Beckham. Sounds familiar? Odell Beckham's younger brother, who looks just like Odell Beckham, is great. He found love. This season of Love Island. And then Odell Beckham makes a cameo appearance late in the season. Because Cordell Beckham is like blowing up because he's so likable, so fun. So genuine, so entertaining. It's a great... I know you're like, what are you... Listen, I'll just discuss it all on Rappaport's Rally, but I'm going to say this. If you're looking for some great, entertaining, heartfelt, romantic TV, watch Love Island, the new season of Love Island, hosted by Ariana Maddox, of course, from Vanderpump Rules. This is like reality TV, like heaven this season, you got Ariana from Vanderpump Rules hosting a great season of Love Island. I'll say no more. I'll, I'll say no more. But if you watch it, thank me later. Back to Lacey Peterson and the Scott Peterson documentary. After we watched that, uh, the other night, I said to my wife, I said, yo, can we watch Gone Girl? She goes, we saw that in the movie theater. I go, I know, but I just want to rewatch it. She goes, what's up? What's up? First, it's Lacey Peterson. You watching that? Like, uh, now you want to watch Gone Girl again? What's up? But I rewatched Gone Girl starring Ben Affleck and it's directed by David Fincher. It's also starring Rosamund Pike, who plays his wife, Amy. And uh, what a movie. Good movie. Uh, David Fincher, what's his name is in it? Do Doogie Hauser, my man. Um, oh God, I can't remember his name. Oh. Anyway, it's awesome. And Ben Affleck plays the sort of affable, you know, husband, and he's married to a lunatic. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, well, did he make her crazy or did she go crazy? Listen, uh, the marriage might have been dysfunctional, and it takes two to tango in a dysfunctional relationship. But the wife is the one that took things to the next level. She did the disappearing act. She faked her own death. She killed Doogie Hauser. She his fucking throat. I know you're like, oh, spoiler alert. Listen, the movie came out in 2014. It's 10 years old. That ain't a spoiler alert. But Gone Girl is a great rewatch. 
Ben Affleck is awesome in it. The woman who plays Amy, Rosamund Pike, is awesome in it. She's a psychopath. What a nut job. What a kook. It's fun. It's entertaining. And even though I knew how it ended, I was still like uh, watching it. And my man Doogie Howser, Paul Patrick, oh, what's Doogie Howser's name? He's such a good actor. Neil Patrick Harris, Neil Patrick Thomas, Neil Patrick Harris, Neil pa Doogie Howser, How I Met Your Mother, he's dope. He's, I know him. He's cool. He's a great actor. He's been around for years. He's a lifer. Anyway, he's great in it. The woman who plays the cop, I can't remember her name in it. David Fincher, of course, directed so many different things, directed Seven, and it's just really good. And it was a great rewatch because it was based on a book, but it definitely had Lacey Peterson, Scott Peterson. It had to have, it couldn't just be coincidental. I don't know the timeline of it all, but if you want a nice double header of a murder doc and chill and then a great murder film, that's a great double header. So that was a long story, long story that could have been shorter, but it's, listen, Say hi, I'm Rapport Stereo Podcast. I do what I do, and I've been doing it for 10 years. 10 years. What else is going on? They had the press conference, the fake Paul Mike Tyson fight is back on November 15th. I think it's in Texas. Is it in Texas? Probably. I think it's in Texas. Jake Paul, who's 26, is fighting Mike Tyson, who's 61, and... The fight was called off because Mike Tyson had some sort of health issue because he's 61. Jake Paul, that's, that's what happened. It wasn't like he injured his knee or injured his shoulder. He had a health issue. I think it was like a stomach issue. That's what happens when you fight senior citizens. You know that, um, you know, retirement? You, you, you're fighting a, a guy who could be in retirement, literally like in, in retirement. 61-year-old guy you're fighting, Jake Paul. Excuse me, fake Paul. Hopefully Mike Tyson will be healthy enough to beat the shit out of fake Paul November 15th. But they had a press conference the other day in New York, Nueva York. They call me Mr. New York. And fake Paul was there, and the crowd was booing him. Do you expect a warm welcome in the greatest city on earth? Fake Paul, do, do you expect people to welcome you with open arms? You're Jake Paul. You're going to be booed. There's never going to be respect. You're never going to get any respect as a boxer until you earn it, you Until you earn it. And if Mike Tyson is healthy, he's going to kick the out of you. He's going to kick the out of you. You're wasting people's time, wasting people's Money, you con artist. You ringling brothers, Barnum and Bill. Bring out the elephants that do tricks. Bring out the juggling monkeys. Bring out the lions that stand. This is what you do. It's carnival. And hopefully Mike Tyson doesn't have any ulcerative issues. I don't know what he had. He had a stomach problem. And he knocks the shit out of you. And, and this ruse, this con that you've been pulling for a few years now will be done. You've never fought an actual fighter except for Tommy Fury, and you lost to Tommy Fury. Tyson Fury's brother, he beat you fair and square. And at the press conference, you're up there talking about New York, and some people are like, yo, Mike Rapp, Jake Paul's talking about New York, uh, yo, Mike Rapp, uh, uh, fake Paul is saying this, that, and the third about New York. Say something about Ohio. I have nothing against Ohio. I got something against fake Paul, fake boxers, wannabe boxers, cosplaying as a boxer. Like, oh, he works really hard. So does the guy at LA Fitness. Well, well he works really hard. So does Joe Schmo at a CrossFit class to get their body in shape. You're not a real boxer. You fought one person who's an actual real boxer and he's not a top ranked anything and you lost to Tommy Guns, Tommy Fury. And you got the audacity to say anything about New York, Nueva Yorker, you fuck you. 
You fake boxer. You wanna be Marvin Hagler? You couldn't scrub Marvin Hagler's beautiful bald head, Jake Paul. You couldn't scrub Ernie Shaver's beautiful bald head. You ain't Roberto Duran. You ain't Roberto Duran. You ain't Manny Pacquiao. You ain't the late, great Jake LaMotta. You ain't Joe Lewis. You ain't Jersey Joe Walcott. Aaron Pryor. Hector Macho Camacho. Ray Boom Boom Mancini. You're not Rocky Balboa. You're not Apollo Creed. You're not Clubber Lang. You're not Tommy Guns. From Rocky Five, of course. Mickey, Rocky's trainer, he'd, he'd, he'd spit on you. Duke, you think Apollo Creed's trainer would train you, Jake Paul? He'd tell you to get the fuck out of the gym. You're not a real fighter. You're not a real fighter. And if Mike Tyson doesn't have any arthritic issues, he's going to kick your f***ing ass. And I am going to be laughing. Oh, I'm going to be... You're talking about New York? Fake Paul? Get the f*** out of here. Expect to be booed all the time. Every time you do anything... That has anything to do with actual boxing. Expect to be booed. Fake Paul, you f*** you. Ha! What else is going on? It's day 319. 319 days since October 7th. 319 days that these barbarian animal dummies, psychopath, maniacal Miserable have held now 115 hostages. They have 115 hostages who have been in there 318 days. And it is, man, I can't even... The, the, the torment and the terror and the demoralization that those that are alive still feel and I pray and think about them and hope for what now seems like a miracle to happen and I think about the families and I think about the the friends and the hostages that were released, the hostages that were rescued, the survivors of October 7th from the Nova Music Festival, the people that saw so much gruesome violence on October 7th that somehow, someway weren't kidnapped, the IDF soldiers who have been fighting in chaotic Chaotic situations, chaotic circumstances. This is an unprecedented war fighting in an unprecedented kind of war, an urban war. I'm going to have John Spencer on the podcast this week. I implore you to listen to that podcast. He studies urban warfare. But when I think about the people and I think about the almost 100,000 displaced people in Israel, 100,000 people from the north of Israel, thousands and thousands of people from the south of Israel. The south of Israel is, of course, where the animals attacked on October 7th in the kibbutzes. The north is where Hezbollah has been shooting rockets and missiles. Since October 8th, what the f*** does Hezbollah have to do with it? You broke into Israel. You murdered people in broad daylight. You murdered people, the most vulnerable people, on a holiday Saturday morning. You kidnapped, you 
You pillaged, you burned people alive, you burned homes down to the ground. And then on October 8th, Hezbollah from Lebanon, nothing to do with Gaza, not anything to do with Gaza, starts sending rockets and missiles in while Israel's still trying to figure out what the f happened on the 7th. And it's been happening 318 days, every single day, like clockwork, Hezbollah's been doing this and just turned down, walked away from the most recent hostage deal slash ceasefire deal. And I hate to say this, but I don't think they ever intended to return all the hostages. I don't think they ever intended to have an actual ceasefire. I think they want this. I think they want to activate Iran. I think they want a war. I think that they want to one way or another try to obliterate Israel by any means necessary. And it's not going to happen. And it torments me. And I'm, I'm not Israeli. I can't imagine the torment, the anxiety that the people of Israel have right now, every night, not knowing if they're going to be attacked by Iran, not knowing if they're going to be attacked on seven fronts. But I'm very certain that one way or another, Israel is going to win. Israel is going to be okay. The Jewish state of Israel is not going anywhere. The Jews are not going anywhere. Israel is not going anywhere. Zionists are not going anywhere. And these animals, these animals, all they want, all they think about, all they dream about, all they discuss is the destruction of Israel. That's it. That's all they, 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 they to the idea of the destruction of Israel. These sick and it ain't gonna fucking happen. I'm so concerned that these mother will not agree to any ceasefire, any hostage deal. They don't want it. They're psychotic gorillas. And I don't mean the good kind of gorillas. I mean like gorillas with thick three inch, three and a half inch skulls, concrete, dumb, demented, corroded gorillas, dumb dumbs. I saw the guy on CNN, what's his name? Jim, Jim Scotto talking to the now head of And the guy's like, oh, the, the, the gorilla is like, thinks that the world is on board with what he's saying. And like, when you see like the demented, corroded gorilla speak to a normal person, you see that this is the leadership of a How the fuck are we going to get into a hostage deal, a ceasefire deal, when the leader of is a corroded gorilla with a three and a half inch concrete skull? Dumb, dumb, dumb f All of them. They don't see five inches in front of them, let alone five days in front of them, let alone five years in front of them. They're dumb. And it was International Humanitarian Day, and the UN's like, oh, this, is, this has happened on International Humanitarian Day. The, this, this many uh, citizens of Gaza... Have have had this happen, and this many citizens of uh, uh, have had this happen, and this many have had this happen, and any innocent citizens who are victims of war, it's sad. But the international committee, the ICRC, the ICRC, the International Committee of the Red Cross. They sit up there, oh, well, today's in humanitarian day and we're, get the f*** out of here. Red Cross is a sham. Save the children. UNICEF has a, is a 
sham. They have not touched. They have not seen. They have not laid eyes on one of the hostages in 318 days. They have not touched. They have not seen. They have not treated. They have not laid eyes on one of the hostages in 318 days. What the f*** are you there for? I've seen this. I've seen that. That's what the ICRC uh, was talking about on International Humanitarian Day. I've seen this. I've seen that. But you haven't seen one hostage. Get the f*** out of here, you useless f- you. You're useless. Anyway, say a thought, say a prayer, send a tweet, send a text that these hostages can continue to fight and live another day and know that people are thinking about them. Send love, vibrations, meditate, whatever you do. Shoot a basket, make a swish, shoot a three-pointer, hit a putt and think about the hostages, think about their families and think about the, the victims and survivors. I'm done. I am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. I'm out. Tell a friend to tell a friend about the I am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast, the world's most disruptive podcast. Miles Jordan, a.k.a. the Bleach Brothers. Iggy, a.k.a. the Dust Brothers. Take me out of here with something real nice. Take, take me out of here with something real loud. But most importantly, take me out of here with something real funky. See, I am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. I'm out.